Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains, and today we're looking at Apple, Amazon, and Facebook stock ahead of their upcoming earnings to see what investors might want to do with these three big tech giants. But before we get into everything, I want to say remember to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And make sure to check out our new zax.com slash promo page for a look into some of our services, portfolios, and more. This week, you get a free copy of Finding Number One Ranked Stocks from our Executive Vice President, Kevin Matris. All right, so last Friday, Big Tech fell, which pushed major indexes into a decline on the week. Last week also saw the continuation of a recent trend that saw a bit of a rotation out of some of the big tech winners, such as Tesla and some other big names into more valuation type plays. We also saw Intel and Microsoft fall despite posting some solid second quarter results. So this could put a lot of pressure on the other big tech players this week who are reporting, as we just mentioned, Apple, Amazon, other big names. And within that broader market, as a lot of stocks are up big. So what we might have going on in the second quarter is that people are taking home profits. They're using this earnings period to take home some of their big gains over this big coronavirus run since late March. Sort of a kind of sell the news pullback is what you might be seeing. So my boss, Shiraz Mian, who is also the director of research here at Zach's, wrote last Friday in one of his earnings write-ups. And I think it kind of just summed up my broader point pretty well. So he wrote, uh, that it is the problem. The problem isn't in Microsoft or tech numbers, but rather how these stocks have moved since the March 23rd lows. Market participants are simply using the quarterly report as an opportunity to cash out of these very profitable positions. I would expect something similar to play out as the market digests quarterly releases from Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Alphabet, and others. So that's his synopsis of what he sees happening. It's not that these numbers are bad. It was just going to be a chance for people to take home some profits after they've been run up over the last, at this point, four months or so. So with this in mind, total Q2 earnings for the 128 S&P 500 index members that have reported the results as of Friday were down about 42% from the same period last year on 7% lower revenues. I say that to say that the tech sector stands out and it'll help put into context Apple, Facebook, and Amazon, what they're expected to do. So the overall tech sector of the S&P 500, those Q2 results so far uh, from 35% of the sector's market cap are down about 5.2% on 1% higher revenue. So that compares to the broader index's 42% decline on 7% lower revenue. So obviously tech has shown its ability to withstand this coronavirus pullback and its broader immunity to this stay-at-home economy. So we're going to start with Facebook. The company was set to release its second quarter fiscal 2020 results on Wednesday, but they announced this morning that they are now planning to report on Thursday instead due to a scheduling conflict with Chief Executive Officer Mark Zuckerberg set to testify before the House Judiciary Committee Committee on Wednesday uh, at an antitrust hearing that's looking into big tech. This includes Facebook, Apple, Alphabet, Amazon. So now they're reporting on Thursday. So with all of this in mind, we're going to look into what's going on with Facebook. Uh, they continue to be surrounded by controversy. Nonetheless, Facebook rests about 8% off their mid-July highs, and they've outpaced the broader tech sector since the market's March 23 lows, up about 57%. And overall, the company has eventually seemed to overcome all of its attacks since that hashtag delete Facebook push came up following the Cambridge Analytica user scandal user data scandal back in early 2018. The company has already bounced back from its latest controversy, which saw some big name companies temporarily, quote, boycott advertising on Facebook. Yet many of those firms are already likely planning to pull back some ad spending during the coronavirus economic downturn. And more importantly, 
roughly 75% of Facebook's ad spending comes from the millions of small and mid-sized businesses that use Facebook. Uh, and this is according to Deutsche Bank figures. And these smaller companies can't afford to cut the exposure as much as some of these larger companies uh, because Facebook just really reaches too many people, about a third of the global population. So with that in mind, Facebook's daily active users climbed 11% last quarter to 1.73 billion with its monthly active users up 10% to 2.6 billion. So that's that roughly third of the global population. Uh, both of these growth rates topped recent periods and the overall engagement across Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Messenger all increased during that stay-at-home push. Uh, another important factor to consider is that this overall momentum in digital ad spending was already here in the coronavirus isn't going to wash it away, even if there's a temporary pullback in that spending. So if you look at what the percentage of total U.S. ad budgets that's going towards digital channels, it's projected to expand from 54% in 2019 to nearly 70% by 2023. So it's going to take up about 70% of the overall ad market, that digital ad spending. So in the end, Facebook and its various platforms really might have just too many users to ignore in an age where hundreds of millions of people pay to avoid ads. This is from Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Spotify, countless other segments. Um, there obviously are legitimate concerns. We mentioned the antitrust hearings uh, of possible further government intervention. And we should note that Facebook has already paid a historic $5 billion FTC settlement for user privacy issues. So with that said, the company is also expanding beyond that digital advertising business where it makes about 98% of its money, 99% of its money. Uh, in May, it announced its new mobile first shopping experience where businesses can, quote, easily create an online store on Facebook and Instagram for free. The firm's working with Shopify on its new, what it calls Facebook Shops, that deepens its expansion into the booming e-commerce market, where it's trying to now challenge the like of Etsy and others. They've already found some success with its Facebook Marketplace that competes against the likes of eBay. And Craigslist and shopping directly on Instagram had already been growing in popularity. On top of that, it's expanding its WhatsApp focus for business. And we should note that in April, the company agreed to pay about $6 billion for a roughly 10% stake in Indian telecom powerhouse Jio Platforms. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Uh, the move's sort of part of a bigger bet on the massive Indian market that has roughly 1.3 billion people. This is where Facebook already has over 400 million WhatsApp users in that country. So India could be another big growth area for Facebook going forward. And they've obviously put some money behind that bet. So with this all in mind, Facebook shares are up about 150% in the last five years against the broader tech sectors, 90% climb. But despite that impressive growth, they've actually fallen behind all of their FANG peers aside from Google over that stretch. With that said, the stock is trading at about 7.8 times forward 12 month sales estimates which marks a discount compared to its own one-year highs. And if we put that next to, say, Microsoft, that they're trading at about 10 times. So at a discount compared to some of those big tech peers, which makes sense as they haven't climbed as much as some of them as well. Uh, we should also note that the company holds about $50 billion in cash and equivalents. And this is even taking into account its recent investment and its $5 billion FTC settlement, which took effect in April 2020, so this past April after their Q1 results uh, came out and after their Q1 had ended. So this cash position could help Facebook really weather the continuing pandemic storm while also being able to invest in new growth areas. So if we look quickly to last quarter, their sales were up 18%, adjusted earnings were up 100%, and they helped calm some nerves by noting that some of the ad spending had flattened compared to the year ago period, whereas before it had been down big. So with this in mind, our second quarter 
Zach's estimates are calling for its revenue to climb about 2.5% to over $17 billion, with its adjusted quarterly earnings expected to climb about 58% to $1.44 per share. And then if we look ahead to Q2 or Q3, we're expecting another 7% revenue jump to help lift its full year sales by about 10% with its adjusted earnings expected to climb about 14.5% this year as well. So these top line figures do mark a bit of a slowdown compared to obviously some of its recent expansion, but they do fare very well against the broader market and even that tech space. So that's more what you have to be thinking about if you're thinking about these big stocks is how are they comparing to everyone else? And it looks like they're still going to be able to grow. With that said, uh, there could be clearly, as we mentioned, a pullback with Facebook stock. It's currently a Zach's rank number three hold, and it has seen some positive earnings estimate revision activity. It also holds a B grade for growth and an A for momentum. But you might want to wait until they actually report their results on Thursday to see what that guidance looks like. And as I mentioned now, and I got to keep saying it, there could continue to be a pullback as people take home some profits. And it's going to be just really hard to really wow Wall Street enough to run the stock up, even though they're they're sitting a little bit off of their recent highs. But as a longer term bet, Facebook might be a stock to consider as it really is just, it's almost too big to fail at the moment unless there's that government intervention because advertising digitally is becoming the only place to do it. And Facebook is one of the biggest outlets in the world to do just that. And they're obviously expanding their reach. So now we're going to move on to Apple, which is also scheduled to report its results. It's their Q3 of fiscal 2020 after the closing bell on Thursday. So all of their companies are going to report on Thursday that we're talking about today. Um, the iPhone maker has seen its stock surge about 70% since the market's lows. The question is now, is it a little too late for investors to get in? Um, and we'll go through it and then kind of make up our mind at the end. Uh, Apple, as most of our listeners probably know, has been one of the safest bets on Wall Street for over a decade. And its $1.6 trillion market cap makes it the most valuable company in the world at the moment. The iPhone obviously propelled much of Apple's success during this run, yet CEO Tim Cook and Apple have expanded into new growth areas and are determined to continue Apple's run into the coming decade or the current decade, which we're, we're just starting off in. Apple's App Store remains widely successful and its other services such as Spotify Challenge or Apple Music and its newer streaming TV service to take on Netflix and others will likely continue to grow. They also have a gaming unit and other offerings that are designed to bring in more money from its user base. If we look at these active devices, the numbers are not 100% exact, but at the moment, there's roughly 1.5 billion active Apple devices. So they're trying to just get more reoccurring revenue from people who own iPhones or Macs or AirPods or Apple Watches. In speaking of AirPods, that that division's boomed recently. That wearables unit, uh, those are their wireless headphones, have done very well. Uh, with that all said, Apple stores throughout much of the world were closed during the height of the coronavirus, and they also are continuing to close some stores uh, in hot spots in the United States. So that's obviously a bit of a concern when people aren't able to go into these Apple stores. And despite though all of these pandemic setbacks, we mentioned the stock is up about 70% from the March lows. This tops Amazon and all of its fang peers. So Apple has been the best performer of those really big tech names during the market's comeback. With that said, it also trades at a discount to Microsoft and the broader tech space as it has for much of the last 10 years. And in a sign of strength amid all of this, last quarter they raised their dividend by 6% and up their buyback program by about 50 billion and this came while others cut or halted its current yield tops the 10-year u.s treasury note and its cash position will likely help it as with facebook continue to perform well during this economic uncertainty and whether any further unknowns down the road Apple also announced in June they would phase out its 15-year partnership with Intel, 
this move is part of a larger transition to its own silicone, which they've said will help it cut costs, increase battery life, improve compatibility, and much more. So they're kind of closing the circle where they're going to even own more of that production process for their different devices. So looking ahead, our Zach's estimates are calling for its Q3 earnings to slip by about 8.7% to $1.99 per share on 5% lower sales. And if we look more specifically, the company's iPhone sales are projected to about 21%, and this is based on some of our key company metrics here at Zach's. Meanwhile, services sales are expected to climb 14%, and wearables are projected to pop 7%. So that gives you a sense that those other divisions that have grown services and wearables are helping make up for what is expected to be a significant decline in iPhone sales. With that said, uh, it's next generation iPhones are due out later this year. So you could see those sales return in the second half of 2020 for Apple. So with this in mind, our full year fiscal estimates are calling for its sales to jump about 1% and then come in 15% higher next year in 2021. So some big things are expected, obviously, from this iPhone based on those estimates. Apple is currently a Zach's record with their hold, and it's part of a highly ranked industry. And like Facebook, it's seen some positive earnings revisions recently. We should also note that Apple stock has popped following its earnings in five out of the last uh, or five straight quarters in an eight out of the last 10 quarters. So the stock in the last 10 periods has climbed eight times uh, following its earnings release. But like with Facebook and like we're going to talk about with all these stocks, it could certainly fall in the short term given its run in the continued uncertainty. We can look at Microsoft as an example. They posted strong results, but people found an excuse to sell the stock after that. So Wait for its guidance, that possible pullback, but longer term investors don't necessarily need to find the best entry point because Apple stock does provide that stability, income, growth. And people have probably been saying for years it's too late to buy Apple, but the stock continues to go up and it doesn't seem like there's ever going to be a bad time to buy Apple, but it might be more prudent to wait for at least to report its results and then see what the stock does in the next couple of weeks if you can find a little bit better of an entry point. But longer term investors don't need to be worried as much. And now we're going to close out with Amazon, who, as we mentioned, I'm going to say it again now, they're scheduled to report on Thursday as well. The Seattle powerhouse really seems to be tailor-made to outperform during the coronavirus and this broader social distancing push that's seen more and more people stay at home. Back in March, Amazon announced plans to hire about 100,000 more employees to deal with this increased demand, which stood in contrast to all these other companies and businesses that are having to fire people en masse, and you see millions of Americans out of work. That shows Amazon's strength amid all of this. So their ability to meet demand, obviously, amid this pandemic could be key in the near term and the long term, as its traditional rivals in retail, such as Walmart and Target, also showcase their ability to dive headfirst into the e-commerce and delivery market. So then outside of retail, it's prime heavy subscription business, makes a lot of money uh, and it's cloud business, it's AWS business is made to shine during this environment as it was already part of this booming cloud space. And then uh, it's competing against Microsoft. Sorry, I was scrolling down on my notes and then one of its other, and actually the fastest growing space that I think gets a little bit uh, not enough credit for growing recently is its digital heavy other division, digital ad heavy other division. So it's now the third largest player in the US advertising space behind Google and Facebook. That's been growing at a pretty significant clip the last several years. And then the stay at home environment could also see maybe some more people realize that it's it's prime video offerings, which are included in that prime subscription uh, are solid because I feel like at this point, more people focus on Netflix and Disney plus and some other offerings when if they're already paying for prime, they, they also get this prime video included for free. And with movie theaters, not likely to come back anytime sooner, at least some of the last things to come back 
uh, that prime video business could grow. And then if we're going to look ahead, um, Amazon, we're not, look at, we're not looking ahead yet, sorry. The stock has uh, been lumped in sort of with this broader stay-at-home stars of Zoom and Netflix and others. Uh, the stock's up about 60% in 2020, and this is against the S&P 500's roughly sideways movement so far this year. And obviously, though, Amazon is more than just a coronavirus star. The stock has topped all of its FANG peers over the last three years, and this is a part of a massive decade-plus run. Like a lot of these stocks, though, it has cooled off recently. Uh, it's up about 4% in July, and it hovered about 6% below its 52-week highs on Friday. But the stock, like all these stocks, was up through morning trading this morning on Monday. So if we look, our estimates are calling for Amazon's second quarter revenue to jump about 28%, which would top Q1's sales growth and mark actually its strongest revenue growth since the third quarter of 2018. So we're calling for a big second quarter for Amazon. Despite its projected revenue growth, uh, increased costs are expected to eat into its earnings figure with our adjusted Q2 earnings calling for uh, estimates calling for it to, to sink 66% to $1.75 per share. Yet its third quarter earnings are still expected to climb about 20%. So bit of a comeback we're calling for in Q3. And obviously there's this near term bottom line setbacks could be even more of an excuse for Wall Street to sell Amazon in the near term as they're dealing with this increased demand. But if we look to fiscal 2020, its sales are set to jump about 25% and then come in another 18% higher in 2021 with its adjusted earnings projected to skyrocket 90%. Uh, above our current year estimate that next year. So big growth on the bottom line is expected in 2021, even though we're calling for a bit of a setback this fiscal year down 12%. With all this in mind, it is a Zach's rank number three right now that once again has seen some positive earnings estimate revision recently. And with all these stocks, it's going to be hard to impress Wall Street in the near term, especially with Amazon's bottom line expected to take a hit, even though it's taking a hit by facilitating some massive top line growth that we're calling for. So once again, though, longer term investors don't need to be as worried about this possible near term pullback as Amazon has proven that they were running a business for the future for about the last decade. And the coronavirus economy in this last month, four months has really showcased that this is the business of the future and Amazon's going to continue to run it. So uh, it's not only a pandemic play, it's a longer term play that you might think it's too late to get in on. But like with Apple, people have been saying it's too late to get in on these stocks for years and they continue to go up. Uh, as I mentioned, all of these stocks are up through morning trading on Monday, but this earning season could see more of a pullback, but definitely pay attention to anything their management says on their earnings calls on Thursday as there'll, there'll be a lot more concrete data on what the coronavirus is doing and what they're expecting in the second half of the year. So that does it for another episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions or episode suggestions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.